from San Francisco, it's theCUBE. Covering GitLab Commit 2020. Brought to you by GitLab. Hi, I'm Stu Miniman and this is theCUBE's coverage of GitLab Commit 2020 here in San Francisco. Kicking off our coverage of 2020. Uh, great developer show talking about the, the platform that GitLab is building and have one of the keynote presenters from this morning, uh, Christy Lenneville, who's the user experience director at GitLab. Uh, thanks so much for joining us. It's my pleasure. All right, so uh, the, the, one of the, the things that uh, you know you and was talking, uh, talking in the keynote this morning was we have the sprawl of tools. And of course, one of the challenges people know is if you're talking different tools in different environments, the user interface is going to be different, and therefore, the, the stat I heard in the keynote was over 50% of DevOps time is wasted on logistics and repetitive tasks mm -hmm. in all these environments. Uh, before we dig into it, uh, Christy, love just a little bit about your background, because hey, you, you t hinted at it a little bit in yeah. your keynote that some past experiences you've had. So what, what led you to this role at GitLab? Yeah, so I've been in tech for about 20 years. Um, didn't go to school thinking that I would be a UXer one day because 20 years ago, frankly, <laughs> that wasn't even a thing. Um, but over the years, I've gotten to work at Dell and General Motors, Rackspace, and then a, a regional company that's still huge called HEB. Uh, so lots of enterprise, lots of tech, um, which is areas that I'm just really passionate about UX in. Yeah, well, when we talk so much about tech, um, I love one of the things I, I've looked at in my career is there's the cool tech, but you know, what is, how does design fit into these? You know, there's of course the easy examples of Apple, but you know, so many of the products, when you talk about the difference between it being a utility and I love this thing, often is the design and that, mm -hmm. that, that user experience piece of it. Um, in the DevOps software world, give us a little bit of your world, the challenges that you're seeing, what differentiates uh, you know, an, an okay product versus something that customers are going to be like, you know, I, I love this, I want everybody to use it and you know, want to spread, spread the gospel. Yeah, um, so building the types of tools that we are building at GitLab isn't sexy work like working at Apple. Um, but I'll tell you this, the designers who work on these types of tools are really deeply passionate about creating great experiences for people to do their jobs every day, um, which is actually really exciting work. So what's interesting though is oftentimes people are coming from using these very outdated legacy tools, oftentimes they're internal tools uh, that just don't have a great experience. So we get really excited about being able to take the type of tool that someone is coming, it's like these folks don't have a choice. They're not getting to decide which tool they get to use to do their job. They have to use it. And we are really respectful of that. Just because they have to use it doesn't mean that we want uh, to take advantage of that. Uh, we want it to be a really excellent experience. All right, so Christy, I had heard before when you talk about GitLab, there, there's dev, there's sec, there's ops. In the keynote, you talked even groups like finance and marketing need to get involved. Um, there, there's very different expectations and uh, skill set when you talk about those roles. So uh, help me understand a little bit. Are there different interfaces based on my roles? Is it just so simple that anybody should be able to understand it? H help us understand how that yeah. works. So that's the goal. Yeah. Um, I'm not, not going to tell you that they're <laughs> there yet today, um, but that's the idea. So you know, having worked in tech for such a long time, um, it's. I've got a lot of uh, experience with watching different roles try to interact with these technical teams. You know, the, you know, the tech teams, for them, this is, this is bread and butter stuff. They know exactly what's going on. And uh, other roles really try to kind of bring themselves to the developers. And that's what we're trying to make easy. So things like taxonomy play a huge role in that. The way that uh, deeply technical people talk about the work that they do is very different from how people in other roles do. Um, and we're starting to think about how we can converge those two things just to make it easy for everyone. No, it, 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 I love that because a few years ago there was, oh, developers are the new kingmakers and they're going to do off their thing, but it kind of seemed like the developers were off on the side and they were going to choose their tools and figure things out and then somebody eventually needed to pay for something and figure out how it works in the environment. The story I'm hearing and the, the maturation of that is 
d developers are closer to the business and these roles need to talk and communicate and, and fit together. Is, is that what you're seeing? Yeah, that's absolutely right. <laughs> All right. So GitLab also, your, your product line spans a, just a broad spectrum. There's, yeah, I don't have memorized the 10 categories that you need to fit. Um, I, I believe there was a couple acquisitions uh, that, that, that helped grow here, but mm -hmm. you start with SCM and CI. Those alone, making sure that those work together uh, is a certain bit of work, but you know, how, do you, how do you span the gamut and make sure that all these various pieces uh, are, are gonna have some kind of coherent experience? Yeah, so we're uh, also thinking about you know, project planning that happens before SCM and CI ever starts. Um, and so we're thinking about how do we make it easy to take something from an idea, an issue, directly into that build process. Um, and then after that, it's like, okay, so then what happens next? Keeping it secure. Um, and then watching it to see what's going on, monitoring it, um, and then just getting it out onto infrastructure through uh, our ops features. Okay. Um, Talk a little bit about how you interact with the ecosystem and the community. Also, it's everything is open. Uh, you know, mm -hmm. understand if you know I wanted to see the meeting minutes, I can dive right in and do it. Yeah. And we heard lots of examples uh, in, in the presentations about oh, some change has been made, or you know, Sid, Sid your CEO joked, you know, somebody corrects my grammar, um, and that's not necessary. <laughs> oh, may, may, maybe it is somebody inside the company, uh, but. Uh, uh, you know that dynamic is to make sure you have something that is coherent when you have so many different internal and external constituencies that will be opinionated as to how things should go. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so let's see here. Um, <laughs> ask me again. Sorry. Yeah. So you get all these other constituents that that want to right. kind of have a stake and probably have an opinion as to how things should go. Yep. Uh, how do you make sure it works not just for GitLab but all of your customers and the partner ecosystem that you're building around yeah. it. Thank you. Um, so we do take the comments that come in on issues very seriously. Uh, my team is looking at that. Our product managers are certainly looking at that. Um, and, and we look at that as directional information. Where my team really takes that though is then we dive in and we do UX research. Um, so we are very mindful of the fact that the comments that are coming in, um, we don't take them literally. Uh, we take them as it kind of advice about where do you dig in next. Uh, so what my team is doing is figuring out uh, what roles are really interested in this future, going out and either doing surveys or talking directly to customers, doing qualitative interviews where we're sitting down and saying, okay, so we get it, you have some feedback here, and that's wonderful, but what were you trying to do? How did you even get here? Where did you want to go next? What things are working well for you? What things aren't working as well? I mean, that's a lot of what we do. Um. You've got a global environment that this is going into. What, what challenges does that put on what you're doing? <laughs> yeah, it brings a lot of challenges. Uh, one of the bigger challenges that it brings is in our UI copy, right? Um, so field labels, things like that. We really try to be mindful about that uh, so in a couple of different ways. So um, the way that people talk about things uh, is different throughout the world. We try to be mindful about not using things like jargon um, so that everything is clear and easy to understand no matter where you are. We also think about things though, uh, like length of text, which can have a really big impact. So we know German <laughs> tends to have some long words. We have to be mindful of that as we're writing UX copy. Because uh, in the end, we want this to be as easy for everyone to understand as possible the moment that they look at it. All right. Uh, how about d d announcements? Uh, we, I understand the 22nd of every month is when uh, code drops, so just bring us up to speed as to what people should know about, about GitLab product today. Yeah, so we, we release features at an industry-changing velocity. I have never seen anything like it. Um, and from a, I'm always going to think from a UX perspective, UX is deeply involved in that. So there is not a release that goes by where you as a customer or a user can't actually see the impact of the release. Yeah, things are happening behind the scenes and we're shoring things up and strengthening the back end, but we're doing things on the front end constantly. Um, and my designers and researchers know that that's like they're on the hook for that. And so they're always thinking about like, what's that next thing that we can deliver? All right, so Christy, dark mode for everything now. <laughs> <laughs> so, 
dark mode has definitely been something that we have heard from our user base that they really want. Um, something that we're working on is a good design system so that we have single source of truth components. We'll make, that'll make it much easier for us to do the dark mode that we know is a legitimate ask from our user base. Yeah, absolutely. Anything else, uh, just trends or things that you're looking at uh, for 2020? Trends that we're looking at, you know, it's interesting. I'll be honest, I don't think that we think a lot about trends. What we're really doing is we are looking at the feedback that's coming in directly from our user base, um, and then we're trying to make decisions based on that. Um, so actually, I don't. I couldn't say that we have any trends per well, se. Well, you know, mobile drove a lot of the last yeah. decade or so. Yeah. Are any of the voice or interactive, uh, you know, type of platforms have any impact on what you're doing yet? Yeah, so we, uh, we are thinking about mobile. We're not thinking about, in the term, about it in terms of uh, native mobile apps. We're really trying to think about it in terms of just making a really good responsive experience. Uh, we're trying to get a better sense of which jobs um, are most commonly done on mobile devices so that we can focus first on making those better. Um, but that's also something we're trying to think about with every design. So I see my designers doing a really good job these days. So. I, you know, they put together a design, they're thinking about it in terms of desktop, and then I see them pivot and think, okay, so what does this now look like on a mobile device? So we have a lot of work to do in this area. I'm not gonna tell you that we don't, but I see us getting better and better all the time. All right, Christy, thanks so much for giving us all the updates. Really great to dig into it. Yeah, it's been my pleasure. All right, I'm Stu Miniman, and thank you for watching theCUBE.